Welcome back to Turboville. We're on our way to building turbo motors, cooling systems, and a ton of heat sinks in a mega factory designed to look like a small town. We already have our train station down. Check the description for a link to that video. But what small town would be complete without a school? So today we're going to be building Turboville High School, the kind of school where they make aluminum scrap in the gym. When we get done today, we'll have all the raw materials for our Turboville factory processed and ready for the next stage of production. Make sure that you stick around until the end of the video to see Turboville High in all its glory. Then Turboville High is going to process inputs from three raw materials. We have coal coming in from a coal node well off in the distance. We have iron delivered over here via our train network. And then we have a bunch of bauxite, 600 per minute, delivered via these two nodes down here at the end. So we have one bauxite node entombed in this glass case over here, and then this other one over here in the distance. They're both impure nodes. So we have both of these with Mach 3 miners fully overclocked to deliver us 600 bauxite per minute for this factory. So you can see we have a very long road and a very long logistics floor. In fact, you can't even see the materials from the other end. And I wanted to do it this way because I want our small town to actually look like a small town, not have belts going everywhere, not having wires going everywhere. So we're gonna hide all of our logistics on a massive logistics floor that will take up an, our entire town. But here's the site at Turboville High. We're gonna have our gymnasium with our aluminum factory right over there on that big platform. And then we're gonna build out from there, but I did start with a little car turnaround. If anybody's ever dropped a kid off at school, this is your worst nightmare, waiting in line to get around this little car turnaround. Of course, this is a high school, so hopefully your child will be driving themselves to school at this point. Then we'll fill in this area with some grass and some decorations later, but I wanted to get started on our aluminum. So just like my full tutorial on how to make aluminum with alternate recipes, I'll drop the link up above if you haven't seen that video yet. We're gonna use sloppy aluminum in the regular aluminum scrap recipe. One of the best things about the sloppy aluminum recipe is that it pairs perfectly with the regular aluminum scrap recipe. The regular aluminum scrap recipe takes the exact amount of alumina solution that one full refinery of sloppy alumina makes. So it makes for a nice, neat factory, just three pairs of two to use all of our bauxite. So we're going to have our aluminum scrap come out right here. We're gonna make our alumina solution right here. We have them flipped around like that because you get the easiest hookup of your life. You just get to take this pipe and hook it into that pipe. Excellent. You can also do the same thing with the pipes on this side because the aluminum scrap process outputs water, which the alumina solution process needs. So you can use the byproduct from aluminum scraps to go into your alumina solution production. It doesn't make quite enough and we'll deal with that in just a second, but we'll hook these up here and then we'll add our additional water here in a moment. To be prepared to do that, we're gonna use these pipeline junction and have them going up like this. And the reason why you want your pipe junctions going up in the middle is that it will prioritize the water on the lower level flowing through before it uses the water at the top. So it will use all of the water from the aluminum scrap and then just adding the extra on the top where it is needed, keeping all of this factory running 100%. You have to make sure that your water does not back up or your process will grind to a halt. Like I said these recipes make for a nice little pairing and now we're going to go down below and get this extra water working. And you'll see that there's a resource well right here that outputs water and this is one of the reasons why we chose to make our factory right here because it would be easy for us to get the water from this resource well. I always kind of like the old faithful effect once you get the uh, resource well pressurizer going. You also see that it will shake my camera a little bit when these things come down. So if you see my camera shaking and you're annoyed by it, sorry, I can't do anything about it. So these are our pipe holes coming down from above. So we need to bring these down and then pump that water up there. I don't think we have enough head lift to bring it up. So we need the pump to get it up to all of our locations. So if you don't know this about pipes, if you just go to put down a pipe, it'll be build mode auto and we'll do some sort of slanted pipe like that, which I'm not a huge fan of. So, but if you hit R, 
you can go to all these different shapes. And so what I want to do in this case is make horizontal to vertical because I want it to look straight and go straight up and down. And we're going to have this pipe run all the way down and look at these pipe junctions in and have them pointed up like this. And then we'll use our pump to pump the water up here into our machine. And so we can see these pipes are full. So we know we have enough head lift to go up there. These pipes aren't full. They seem to be filling up, but they're going back and forth. So we know we're putting out enough water to have these be full, but they're not quite filling up all the way. You can see these are empty and these are completely empty. So we need a pump in here. I'm gonna put that pump right here and make sure it's facing the right direction. You can actually see that little blue thing coming out of the side of it like that. That will actually tell you the head lift. It's better if it's on the vertical pipe and there's not a floor in the way. It will let you know if your pump is strong enough to get it where you need it to get. And now we can see we have this completely full of water. Power and water in. Now we need bauxite for our aluminum solution and we need coal for our aluminum scrap. So let's get those hooked up. The custom swatch is still bugged. So we have to paint everything individually if we want this color. I should give up and pick a different color, a swatch that I already have, but I don't want to. And I think I already have factories using all of these colors down here. So if I change them, it will change the color of those existing factories as well. So I'm sticking to the custom swatch, no matter how annoying it is, just impatiently waiting for Coffee Stain to fix it. Okay, coal is in. Let's get our bauxite going. And we have 600 bauxite per minute. So we have just enough room. Okay, bauxite in, coal in. That means we should probably be getting some aluminum scrap production, which we are. Great sign. We have enough water. We have enough aluminum scrap. Looking good so far. Just get ready for our out output as well. So our aluminum scrap is going to come out right here and we're going to take it downstairs just like we did for everything else to keep this looking spick and span. At the top floor, you have this line with all this stuff all here together and it's kind of difficult to get things where to go without clipping or crossing things in a weird way but with the ceiling mounts everything is just a little bit easier you can say you can keep everything in a row just like this and i think it looks pretty good so if you get it to the right place you can actually put the merger right here on the end of this which i did not get it to the right place but you see what i'm going for here one complication with all this is that this outputs 1080 aluminum scrap per minute. Aluminum scrap is comes in massive quantities. So we actually have to have two output belts for this to go to our aluminum ingot construction. So I'm going to deal with this by merging two of them together, which will be 720 and having another one, which will be 360 and take those both to where we're going to be making our ingots down the street, literally. Now that we've taken care of our 1080 aluminum scrap per minute that we need, now it's time to move on to our steel ingots and our iron ingot, and then move on to the decoration of our factory, which I really is the part that I'm really excited about. So I don't really need to process that much more raw material because I'm importing two of the biggest raw material users for this factory, and that is radio control units and electromagnetic control rods. That factory over there in the distance is where I'm making all my electromagnetic control rods. So I did quite a bit of raw resource <laughs> processing over there. So I don't quite need to do it all over here. So we need two foundries full of steel here for steel rotors. And then we need three smelters full of iron ingots here, all for iron wire, also for steel rotors. All right, let's get going with putting down our foundries here. And they're going to be over here, each in their own little classrooms. And I'm gonna have the inputs go in the back and the outputs come out here in the front, like so. And we're gonna do the same thing right here, like this. I have to say this resource well pressurizer, giving me an earthquake on my screen every like 15 seconds really throws me off the hover pack. Floating around is bad enough, but that's fine. I'll deal with it. All right, let's get out our smelters while we're putting down machines and we're going to do the same thing and have our inputs come out here in the middle. Why I'm doing that, just to kind of let you know my reasoning, I'm going to have a truck come in here and pick this stuff up. Literally the first trucks I've ever used to come pick this stuff up and distribute it throughout the factory. And it's a little bit easier if you have the inputs coming out the same direction. You can put them right next to each other, go into the truck stations, which will be right there. So let's put our smelters down. Give me three of these. Each of these will be in their own little classroom as well. And then let's just knock out for placement efficiency's sake. Let's knock out our conveyor lift holes. 
quick PSA is that when you put these lists in these floor holes, just make sure you have the input and output correct. I put down about five of these in the wrong direction and which gets a little bit annoying. So just double check before you put them in. Save yourself some time. Check twice, measure once or something like that. Oh yeah, measure twice, cut once. That's what it is. I appear to have entombed a space giraffe inside of cement. I don't know if it'll stay there for the rest of his life. Let's see if we can free him. Will he move? There you go. Now you'll be entombed in the resource well pressurizer for the rest of your life. I guess better than inside one piece of cement. We're going to bring down our belt here towards the splitters over here for our iron ore. We're going to come in this side of the splitter like this, and I have it set up so then we can split off the iron off this side to bring over to our steel foundries down there. So let me just hook up these belts real quick. And I've officially run out of aluminum for belts, so I guess I'll make an aluminum run. Luckily, my aluminum production is on the exact other side of the map. So let me catch a train and I'll be right back. Whee! So we have our coal in, we have our iron into our foundries and we have our iron into our smelter. So let's get some power and get the recipes on and get these things moving. Now that we have our steel ingots and our iron ingots and our aluminum machines are working as well. And now it's time to decorate this and make it look like high school. So make sure you stick with me so you can see the finished product. I think you're going to like it. Let's start here with our smelter classroom. And for each classroom, we're going to use a single window and then a side door to put here in the middle. By the way, my accidental discovery of the right mouse button click to put down what you point at and hit the mouse button. It's just like blown my mind. I can't believe I didn't know this beforehand, but it's made my building so much quicker. When he's a metal roof here, but one thing I wanna do is have the roof hang off the edge, but I don't want it to hang an entire foundation off the edge. So I'm gonna show you a little trick to get the roof to actually start in the middle of the wall like this. So if you put a beam down, and you can take a roof and then start it on the halfway if you get it lined up just right, like so. I'm gonna use flat roof here going for kind of a modern look and then you can, if you just put one down, then you can zoop it all the way across. So you can see how that kind of provides the half hangover. We're gonna make this look better eventually, but this gives you this half overhang like this, which I think looks a little bit more realistic and better than having the whole thing stick out, which is off a little bit proportionally so i'm going to take this beam out now but that's one trick you can use to get your half overhang as a beam you can use a column anything like that and a roof will sit on top of it just like i showed you i'm going to put a ceiling light down here as well and put it right here in the center we're going to do one of these in each of these rooms we're going to do another little bit of power hiding here as well because we don't want this to be completely obvious so we're actually going to put this power cable right here in the wall and so you can't really see it but you now you can bring it down you're going to go down here and a little way to do it to line it up i'm just going to take this out and then i'm going to take this from here and then just bring it straight down pull off to the side here i don't flip that bad and that goes up through the wall can't see it on this side either you have to remember that they're there though because you can't see them in the wall so after <laughs> after a while if you don't do it right away you're gonna forget we'll come back and add some design flourish to that but first i just wanted to get everything down and get the shape of the rooms first before we actually make it look very good so we're gonna do the same thing over here with our foundries as well very similar design with a viewing window and a door we have the general shape down of our classroom wing over here, and we're gonna make this look a lot better here in a little bit. Before we get the gymnasium side working over there, I wanna get in our loading dock where we'll load up the steel ingots and the iron ingots being made here in Turboville High. We're getting our loading dock over here for trucks, which we'll do in the next video, but I wanna make sure that our loading dock is set up so we know that we have room to actually set up our trucks in the next video. I've never done them before, believe it or not. And this is going to be a first. I'm excited yet terrified with having to learn how to do trucks on the internet in front of a couple thousand people. So it should be entertaining. Tune in to the next vid.
So our loading dock is coming together nicely. Let me get the rest of the decoration on this and close it up. Loading dock knocked out. Steel and iron knocked out. Let's get this gymnasium going. All right, it's starting to come together, but this uh, gym is looking about NBA arena sized. But, you know, you got to deal with what you got. Refineries are pretty big. We have a little second floor here for a little off school office, and it's just going to give us a little bit different design element to have this little second floor that will stick out like a little cube. But the general shape has come together pretty nicely. I have to say the gymnasium is absolutely massive. But if you want to fit fineries in there, smokestack and all, it has to be pretty tall. And I believe this does have the general shape of high school, at least in my view, where it is kind of a low slung classroom building with a big gymnasium attached. I've been a busy boy here on Turboville and my raw material processing plant disguised as a high school is done. Let me give you a quick tour of Turboville High School, the home of the fighting lizard doggos. We'll start over here and pretend we're VIPs like the principal and the vice principal. Lucky dogs get their own parking spot. Okay, all visitors must check in at the office. Okay, office upstairs. Excellent, okay, office. Sign in here. Okay, that's a little cryptic, but okay. Check out the vice principal's office. Okay, not very well appointed. Oh, I see the principal has the big chair and the big desk and the widescreen monitor. Fancy Dan. Let's go check out some actual learning rooms. All right, classrooms this way. Okay, okay, we got lockers for the students, very nice. Okay, basic metallurgy. Ah, I see a very small faculty to student ratio here at Turboville High, very nice for the students. Intermediate metallurgy, oh, I see. All right, now we're working with two kinds of ore. I get it. And the loading dock, ah, yes. The location for my truck setup in my next video make sure that you subscribe to catch that next video where i flail around with truck all right let's head back this way very unique opportunity for the students to see resource well extracting going on right in the middle of their school ah uh, yes the gymnasium oh yeah this is doggo country baby Dixmas Champs, Golden Mug Award winners, and the Coffee Stand Creator of the Week. Loud and proud. Let's see what they got going on here in the gym. Ah, yes. A bunch of aluminum scrap. Oh, we also have a basketball court. Very nice. Now we just need a ball and we can play basketball and soccer on my map. But this factory is outputting 1,080 aluminum scrap per minute from these three pairs of sloppy alumina and aluminum scrap refineries, about 70 iron ingots per minute and 70 steel ingots per minute here at Turboville High School. This isn't just decorative, it is a factory that outputs a lot of items for our upcoming factory. Our next video will feature me making a few neighborhoods in our Turboville small town factory that will build the next layer of products for our turbo motors, cooling systems, and heat sinks. Until next time, I'm Dr. Luke Creighton. Stay stoked out there.